All right, everyone to your places. We're ready in here, sir. How are we in the studio? Stand by, sir. Get the lights. Yes, sir. Striking. Quiet on the set, please. We're on in six, five, four. Greetings, hello everyone. Don't be afraid, it's just us, your friendly anchors at the Arlington Weekly News. I'm Craig Nolan, thanks for joining us. Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Pineda. And my name's Adele Quo. And uh, that's our lineup right here at the anchor desk for this, uh, our show before, two or three shows before Christmas. So we hope you're- uh, Holiday season, Getting guys. in the festive <laughs> holiday spirit and uh, starting to think about doing your Christmas shopping if you've survived. Black Friday and, and Cyber, Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. <laughs> we all survived that, and here we are to bring you another edition of the Arlington Weekly News. Uh, we have our usual stuff lined up here, news and community bulletin board. Adele Quo is here with... It's, it's easy, easy being green. green. Another installment of that, a CBB, as I mentioned. Uh, a little roll-in <coughs> from uh, Two Blue Band, our News for Seniors segment, and another roll-in uh, from Denise, and uh, that's our show, but... Before we begin, a social media reminder from my partner. Absolutely, Mr. Nolan. You can watch the Arlington Weekly News on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News. And everyone, the number one. Also, <laughs> facebook.com slash Arlington Weekly <laughs> News. And also on the radio, right, Just Craig? Just W-E-R-A 96.7 L-P-F-M. Give us a listen. Right here. Here we go with our first <laughs> of our news items. Well, for drivers who haven't heard, if you haven't noticed or found out the hard way, Interstate 66, better known as I-66, converted to a toll system this past Monday, December 4. The uh, high occupancy toll lanes, also known as hot lanes, restrictions will apply to the peak demand direction during rush hour. That is from 5.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. going eastbound and from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. westbound. The affected area runs from the Beltway in Virginia to Washington. Uh, VDOT, the Virginia Department of Transportation, sent the following tweet on Monday morning. <laughs> Reminder, and we're quoting now from VDOT, 66 inside the Beltway is now easy pass only during rush hours. If you want to travel for free, you need to be an HOV2 uh, traveler with an easy pass flex in HOV mode. Otherwise, you can pay a toll with your easy pass. Mm. So we hope uh, some of you are settling down and uh, maybe have the thing worked out by now. We'll see how that goes. <coughs> Daniel. Well, Craig, some viewers might recall seeing a little green scooter parked outside the Italian store in Westover as they came for shopping. Sadly, that is no longer the case. The Italian store posted the following message on Facebook. Arlington, we need your help. Yesterday, 12-2, between 3 to 6 p.m., the 1966 Celesta Green Vespa was stolen from Westover store. The Italian icon has welcomed customers to the store for the past 20 years, and we need your help to find it. Please keep an eye for it. Vespa pictured below. Share this with your friends and let us know if you see it. We have filled a police report with Arlington County Police, but we know how strong this community is, which is why we uh, turn to you for your help. Thank you in advance to all those who help spread the word. The theft is believed to have occurred during the late afternoon on Saturday, December the 2nd. Well, that's really something. We yeah. hope uh, well, they can find the little green Vespa. It's been there in front of the Italian store for a long, long time. Also in our news items, uh, after those first two stories, early anything would be an improvement, right? Well, here goes. The second pass of leaf collection began on Monday, December 4, and it is expected to be completed on December 21. The schedule is pretty compressed for time, so our advice is just to get out there and be ready or go with one of the mulching ideas from our very own EBG, Easy Bean Green segment here. One additional note for drivers, kids sometimes like to play in pile of leaves even if they're uh, in the street. Uh, if you want to park or drive your car over part of the leaf piles, please make sure that uh, the leaf piles are not occupied. 
And uh, I think that's it for our uh, news. It's our news. Yes, that's it. That's it. We're done with news. Yeah, Holy cow, only three news items tonight. Short but Mo sweet. Moving right along. Uh, <laughs> here's the Dell Quo with another installment of It's, it's Easy Being Green. green. All right, thanks so much. My name's Adele Quo. I'm here with my mascot, Joe Tree Frog. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. We celebrate the seasonal festivities, hanging greenery, burning a Yule log, and having parties. Listen to the lyrics carefully. There's nothing about Christmas in the song at all. So it got Joe Tree Frog wondering, why do we decorate with this prickly holly during the holiday season? The melody is Welsh, dating back to the 16th century, and belongs to a winter carol, Nos Galan, about sitting with your loved ones in a warm home, enjoying ale and music. The English lyrics, written by Thomas Oliphant, date to 1862, and in the December 1877 issue of the Pennsylvania School Journal, a variation of the lyrics <laughs> removes any reference to drinking. Today, the bright red berries and evergreen leaves of holly symbolize the holiday season showing up on wrapping paper, cards, and in our garden shops. But Joe Tree Frog wants you to know that decking the halls with holly is an ancient custom several thousand years old. The Druids of pre-Roman Britain believed that holly was a sacred plant that was never deserted by the sun and thought to have magical powers. In Druid lore, cutting down a holly tree would bring bad luck. In contrast, hanging the plant in homes was believed to bring good luck and protection, including protecting homes against lightning strikes. The Romans considered holly to be a symbol of goodwill and sent wreaths of it to newlyweds as a token of good wishes and congratulations. Holly also was used during the December, December Festival of Saturnalia to honor Saturn, the Roman god of agriculture and harvest. Christians adopted the holly tradition from Druid, Celtic, and Roman traditions, and its symbolism changed to reflect Christian beliefs. The Europeans, especially the British, continued the tradition of decorating with holly. Writings from 8, 1598 reveal that every man's home the parish churches, the corners of streets and marketplaces in London were decorated with English holly, which is Elex aquifolium, during the Christmas season. Halfway around the world, decorating with holly during midwinter was a custom of the Chinese, too, who used their Chinese or Burford holly, which is Elex cornuta, for decorating the temple courts and large halls during their New Year's festivals. And the Native American Indians also made use of our American holly, which is Elex apaca, for their decorations. In areas where it's native, the berries were dried and used for decorations on clothing. So remember, it's easy being green, celebrating with our American holly. La 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 la. Deck the halls, deck the halls with Ilex opaca. There we go. <laughs> We're gonna keep using these botanical <laughs> names. So doesn't people have the same them. ring, does it? Not quite. I don't know. It's we'll a good rhythm, though. Come yeah. on. La 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 la. <laughs> Sounded la, good. La, la. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Adele. We appreciate it. Another installment of EBG Easy Being Green. And uh, from EBG, we go to CBB. Here we go in the first of our community bulletin board items. Well, here's something for preschoolers and sleepy adults. It's a presentation about <coughs> hibernating animals. The idea of taking a three-month-long nap might be attractive compared with uh, shoveling snow or some other winter chores, right? Well, anyway, the presentation will be held on Friday, December 8, 10.30 to 11.30 in the morning at Long Branch Nature Center. They're located uh, at Glen Carlin Park, 625 South Carlin Springs Road here in Arlington. There's a $5 <laughs> registration fee, but parents are invited to stay and enjoy the presentation. Parents with younger uh, siblings may prefer to visit the rest of the building instead, but they must remain on site. For more information, give them a call down there at Long Branch, 703-228-6535. Daniel. And Craig, for kids who would rather celebrate than hibernate, there's a youth winter celebration coming up at the Arlington Central Library. There will be activities for preschoolers and elementary age kids, such as crafts, snacks, and winter story times. 
for the older kids in middle school and high school, there will be a hot chocolate fixing bar and a chance to make a present to take home and the option to make a holiday card. The date is on Wednesday, December the 13th. The time is 4 to 6 p.m. and the location is at the children's room at the Arlington Central Library. That's located at 1015 North Quincy Street in Arlington, Virginia. Craig. All right, Daniel, and also in our CBB file here, some people uh, hate wrapping presents and some people like wrapping presents, but uh, they're not necessarily very good at it. Well, here's a solution to help put the wow in your holiday packages. Learn new tips and tricks that will help you not only wrap a fantastic looking package, but have fun doing it. You can even uh, bring your own gifts so you can learn on the job. This uh, takes place on Saturday, December 16, from 2 to 3 in the afternoon at Aurora Hills Branch Library. Uh, information should be on their screen there. They're located at 735 South 18th Street here in Arlington. Attendance is on a first-come, first-served basis. Learn how to wrap those presents. Daniel. Yeah, some people know how to do it, correct, and some, well... They just don't. It's easy to learn, though. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, Arlington Mail will welcome the United States Army Band Trio to perform on Wednesday, December the 13th from 1030 to 1130 a.m. The program will include several musical numbers, followed by a discussion of music therapy, theory, and practice. The address is 909 South Dinwiddie Street in Arlington, Virginia. If you need any more information, call Nicholas England at 703-228-7300. 69. All right, Daniel, and uh, we'll be back with our News for Seniors file right after uh, another uh, edition and another musical treat from Two Blue Band. Check it out. My blues won't fit in 12 bars. <laughs>
And uh, in case you might uh, notice a familiar face there in the two blue band, two blue band, <laughs> easy for you to say. Tongue twister Mary there. Mary Hines back there, uh, thumping away on the stand-up bass. Sounded uh, good. Thanks, we appreciate your efforts. Two blue, two blue band. I <laughs> Take two. I got the two part. I got the two part right, but that's about it. Two blue bland, bland. Take seven. Okay, bland. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go now, as promised, our News for Seniors file. Each year, people make resolutions for themselves. Why not make some resolutions for your home as well? Bill Copeland of Home Depot will provide helpful hints to maintain your home's livability, safety, and value. This happens on Thursday, December 14, at 10 in the morning, 10 to 11 in the morning, at Walter Reed Community and Senior Center and Park, they're located at 2909 16th Street South here in Arlington. For more information, the number should be on your screen there. Give them a call, 703-228-0955. Daniel. Well, Craig, seniors and shuffleboard have been associated with each other for, well, a very long time. But for some people, it's a game they only think they know. Shuffleboard is actually a great game and can be played indoors. Players use cues to push weighted discs down a narrow court into a, well, marked scoring area nearly 40 feet away. Learn how to volunteer. Linda Scholl uh, has all that information and all equipment will be provided. The games begin on Thursday, December the 14th from 1.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Walter Reed Community and Senior Center and Park. That's located at 2909 16th Street South in Arlington, Virginia. If you need any more information, call 703-228-0955. All right, Daniel, and also a news for seniors, it's time for the making of the greens. Well, I used to think I was doing that uh, by just getting up and going to work each day, but there's a little more to it uh, in this case. Come to this annual event and create a holiday centerpiece or decoration. Greenery and workspace will be provided. Bring your own holiday flair. The event takes place on Saturday, December 16, from 10 to 11 in the morning at Lee Community and Senior Center and Park, 5722 Lee Highway in Arlington. For more details and to register, find out more about it by calling Adriana Carr, and her number should be on your screen, 703-228-09, I'm sorry, take two, 703-228-0555. Daniel. <coughs> well, origami, or the art of folding paper, has been practiced for many generations. Yoshi Hazen, an experienced origami artist, will teach you about the history and culture of origami, as well as show you how to create pieces of your very own. This class will focus on beginner shapes and um, how, uh, using them to create seasonal greeting cards. Space is limited, Craig, so please call ahead. It takes place on Friday, December the 15th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Arlington Mail Community and Senior Center. That's at 909 South Dinwiddie Street in Arlington, Virginia. For any more information, call Nicholas England at 703-228-7369. Craig. Practicing You're practicing, practicing already. My origami. Here. You know that you, know, you want to go know. there. You got to start you know you somewhere. There's a start. It's easy to do. Folding paper is fun <laughs> and creative as well. Okay, we'll be back. Uh, I think we'll be back. Yes, we will with a sign off and bye bye. Uh, right after we hear from Denise, Denise Pringle and her reviews. Here's Denise. Adapted by Aaron Posner from a book by Chaim Potok, My Name Is Asher Love is now playing at first stage. Set in Brooklyn in the 1950s, it tells the story of Asher Love, a young boy born into a deeply religious Hasidic Jewish family who had tremendous artistic talent that was evident at an early age. Asher's talent was discouraged by his father, Arya, who worked for the Rebbe and found his son's gift a waste of time at best, perhaps even a sacrilege. He thought his son's drawings of female nudes and depictions of the crucifixion particularly repugnant. Asher's mother Rivka is a bit more supportive and remains in Brooklyn while her husband travels for the Rebbe in Europe. However, after the death of her brother, she feels the need to study and join her husband's travels. The Rebbe arranges for the famous artist 
Jacob Kahn to mentor Asher. Jacob warns him that his art will become his only truth and that it will threaten his religion and his relationship with his family. Later, when Asher has a very successful art show that features paintings of his mother's anguish depicted in images of the crucifixion, he is faced with the heartbreaking decision to move away from his parents. Nick Olcott directs this tale of a man's conflict between his need to create art and his family's deeply religious traditions. Lucas Beck powerfully plays Asher, while Andy Brownstein plays the male roles as Hyla Matthews takes on the female roles. They all convincingly portray characters that are guided by overpowering raw emotions that make it impossible to embrace their differences. Designer Jessica Cancino's set delivers strong support for the story of the love of art. There is some subtle imagery in the empty frames that hang in the family's dining room and powerful suggestions in the trio of windows that first serve as a place for Rivka's observation of her family's departures and finally morph into huge picture frames that house the crucifixion art that destroys her family unit. My Name is Asher Love continues at first stage through December 17th. Experience a truly worthwhile effort by Posner to bring Potek's story to a new audience. Carolyn Griffin at Metro Stage has brought back a Washington holiday favorite to celebrate the Christmas season. Christmas at the Old Bull and Bush was performed at the Old Vat Room at Arena Stage for six years beginning in 1997. After a 15-year absence, it is now being performed with some of its original troupe who are joined by two actors from Metro Stage's A Broadway Christmas Carol, which ran for six years. The Old Bull and Bush is located in Hampstead, London, and used to house the British Music Hall, entertainment for the working classes. It began in the 1890s and was at its peak of popularity for about 20 years. Catherine Fly wrote and directs this homage to that era. Set in 1912, this troupe includes a character, Flory Ford, who was an actual music hall star. The eight cast members sing, dance, tell corny jokes, and act in skits and encourage merriment. Song sheets are distributed to shore, ensure a rowdy sing-along. The songs range from A Bicycle Built for Two to Down at the Old Bull and Bush, War Songs, It's a Long Way to Tipperary, and Pack Up Your Troubles, to Auld Lang Syne, all favorites of the Cockneys of the Edwardian era. Metro stage favorite Tracy Stevens portrays Miss Flory Ford. Catherine Fly is featured as an oversized offbeat fairy. And much of the over-the-top comedy is supplied by Albert Coya as Mr. Bertie Ramsbottom. Music director Joseph Walsh supplies piano accompaniment. The lobby at Metro stage has been given a holiday makeover as a pub as well. Arrive early to partake of the British chocolates and beverages, and perhaps to buy a Christmas cracker so you'll have a paper crown to wear during the second act festivities. As part of the audience participation, you may be asked to read and share the jokes that you find in your cracker. And good King Wenceslas will pit the ladies against the men singing verses. Christmas at the Old Bull and Bush continues at Metro Stage through December 24th. Be sure to attend to remember how people in public houses used to celebrate the warmth of the holiday season. It's such a lovely departure from watching millennials bury their heads in their phones at local coffee shops. In Arena Stage's production of Nina Simone, Four Women, playwright Christina Hamm based her characters on the women in Simone's song and set them in the bombed out 16th Street Baptist Church to illustrate the point at which Simone's anger and outrage at the deaths of four young black girls in 1963 transformed her from a popular performer into the activist she needed to be. When you enter the Krieger Theater, you were gripped by set designer Timothy Maccabee's depiction of the ruins of the church. The stage is filled with dust and rubble, a large damaged stained glass window, 
and several broken pews, some suspended in midair. The floor is strewn with pages from hymnals. Gathered there are the four women suggested by the lyrics of Simone's song. The women are of different ages and shades of brown and interact hesitantly at first. Teresa Cunningham's Sarah, a maid, is unaware of Nina Simone's fame, but knows that the shoes she is wearing set her apart. Tony L. Martin's activist, Sophronia, recognizes Simone. She has actually seen her perform. There is tension between Sophronia and Felicia Curry's sweet thing. They are both in love with the same young man. Harriet DeFoy perhaps has the largest acting challenge. While all four actresses do a fine job of bringing these characters to life, Foy actually gives a nuanced performance reminiscent of the hugely popular singing sensation. This is not a typical musical, perhaps better described as a play with singing, and the four are accompanied by musical director Darius Smith as Sam. Through dialogue and song, each of these four women describe the life events that culminate in their gathering at the ruins of this church. As Simone sits there and processes her agony, we watch her write Mississippi Goddamn, which is worlds away from her cover of I Loves You, Porgy, which propelled her into stardom years earlier. She was intensely brave as she risked her stardom to release her protest songs, which were banned in many southern states. Nina Simone, Four Women, continues at Arena Stage through December 24th. See it to celebrate the life of this hugely talented activist who struggled to see black equality become a reality. I'm Denise Pringle. Now back to the news desk. Okay, thanks, Denise. We appreciate your efforts as always. Got to get out and go to the theater more often. <laughs> <I know. you> know? <laughs> she does so many great reviews for us, right, Craig? It's, it, she does, and we appreciate her efforts. So I'm working, practicing. <laughs> <on my laughs> You're my still or, practicing, or, or, right? My, origami, it's really cool. And, uh, well, you have I've to got, get more n information four, from Nicholas. Four corners. <laughs> more you should join. There you go. There's my, there's my efforts on origami so far. <laughs> Is that beginner? You can, <laughs> you can also do it with money, which kind of makes it pretty interesting, you know. Uh, well, that's our show. I guess we got to go. Anything else to add before we go, folks? It's go Nats. Holiday season. Get your shopping. Well, you know, yeah, as much as you can done. afford, get your shopping <laughs> done. And uh, think of others this holiday right. season time of the year. There's lots of folks who uh, are really struggling out there just to uh, make ends meet and get along every day. So think about them and uh, keep the Christmas spirit in your heart. Uh, we'll try to uh, help you do that here at the Arlington <laughs> Weekly News. That's it for our uh, pre, pre, pre Christmas show for this week. Uh, next week, if you're there, we'll be here and we'll try it all again. Happy holidays. Have a safe week. Bye bye. <laughs>